Hello, assalamu alaikum. Good morning. Khush amdi. Ji ayanu. Khuyu morakha. Bakhair agale. Ni hao. Jure shumbe. Wash bale. Ohio. Good zaymas. Guten morgen. Ola. Boyor. Previat. Kaifa hal. Hale shumar chatore. Ahlan wasalan. Marhaba. Buna. Mucho. Gracia. Swabiyam. And a very amazing. Happy Eid Mubarak. For everybody who's tuned into PT World and are watching World this morning's special Eid transmission, ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you all. Thank you very much for coming on board and joining us. Please make sure that you fasten your seat belts because it's going to be one hell of a journey. Oh, absolutely. Such a fun ride planned for you guys today. I really hope you stick, you know, tuned to your screens for the rest of the day or at least for the next two hours as yes. well because that is when Shazad and I will be here too. Eid Mubarak to you, Shazad. Hello. How was your Eid prayers and how was the Nashta? Finally, after what, almost 30 days of fasting. Exactly. Thank you very much for asking me the, this very amazing question because I think every day, uh, everybody these days is asking these questions as well whether you're going to the mosque for the prayers right. or not. But ladies and gentlemen, as you all know that we're right in front of you, so you know a lot of preparations goes into it. I'm very sorry, but I have to say this. Mm -hmm. I kind of missed out on my prayer. Oh, it's all right. But I will make up for that as well. But other than that, ladies and gentlemen, we definitely hope and pray that everybody's doing well, everybody's looking after themselves yeah. as well. But there's this one quote which I would love to share with everybody out there as well. And I think, Shiza, it is very important and pertinent. And then obviously we'll ask about how your day of was course. because, you know, uh, your day uh, was very special and there's a reason behind that as well. But ladies and gentlemen, the quote is something like this, that uh, it's, it's by Rumi and it says that a wound is a place where the light enters you. And uh, I think that this is the very quote which, with which we can actually relate ourselves to as well. And it's because of the fact that a lot of people have lost their lives. A lot of people have been in distress and a lot of people have been really worried within these COVID-19 times. Absolutely. And Shazad, I think I'm going to take this further as well. Thank you so much for beginning like that. Uh, I want to take this moment to actually sort of appreciate all of you being able to pull out the courage to, you know, celebrate Eid like a festivity as it deserves. But I know and I do realize for the past few months, all of us, regardless of where we belong to, regardless of where we come from, we have been going through a hard time. At this very point, Shazad, I'm going to take this moment again to first of all uh, observe silence and then say a prayer in my heart for all our Kashmiri brethren who have been in occupation and in lockdown especially you want to say quarantine they've been in quarantine for I want to say more than six months even complete black uh, blackout and lockdown going on in the valley too uh, other than that I want to pray uh, for all my Muslim brethren all around the globe as well the Palestinians who are still under occupation or have to go through violations as well people who are at home with their family but still unfortunately they have to go through domestic violence domestic abuse exactly. Shazad exactly. and you know for every one or anyone who's going through a hard time our prayers go out to you and we are here to actually share our mornings and sort of brighten your day up as well and share our love with you no matter where you belong to more than 40 countries in the world exactly thank you very much Shiza, for putting it this way and I think that this is how everybody needs to do it as well ladies and gentlemen because a lot of people will miss uh, all of their lev loved ones who are actually not around them and not just all of those people who've lost their lives uh, to COVID-19, but I think that for all of those people who serve in the armed forces, Absolutely. for all of those people who are in the police and are on duties today as well, for all of those doctors who are looking after all of those COVID-19 positive patients yeah. as well. So there's a rich tribute to you, not just you guys, you know, for all of those anchors who've been on television, who've been going live on television as well, not just them. I think adding on to that, our, uh, you know, makeup team, Camera our cameramen, our people in the MCR, you know, for all of our janitors and, you know, for all of those people who have really worked hard and made sure that they are going to uh, give Pakistan something back as well in these testing times. Absolutely. You know, there's a rich tribute to you, ladies and gentlemen. And this is what we are going to talk about today. Ladies and gentlemen, the sole motive behind these e programs is to celebrate our frontline warriors. And this is why we've actually invited people who've really been involved with people during these COVID-19 <coughs> testing times as well. But to get started, I think I'm going to get started with my amazing co-host as well, because uh, everybody knows that she recently got married and it's her first uh, Eid uh, this time around along her husband and the in-laws as well. She's actually supposed to go to her in-laws. Yeah. But how do you feel, you know, uh, because I just cannot absorb this feeling that, you know, for the last 20 or so years, you know, you have been uh, celebrating or observing all of these festivities alongside your parents. And now yeah. all of a sudden, you know, your sisters and parents are not around, yeah. but it's your husband. How do you feel? It's very different, Shazar, to be honest. Of course, I mean, even if you talk about it, even if you think or imagine it, until and unless light it comes, hits you, you don't realize how different it is. Yep. I am, um, you know, I'm very fond of my sisters and my mother and my father, right? All the time we spend together. But here's the thing, um, looking at, you know, how different this Eid has been. I'm, of course, I'm going to go to Karya. There's a new family there. They're absolutely 
absolutely lovely. They're absolutely amazing people to spend the time with. But well, uh, it's different. It I want to say <laughs> that. And it here's is. a good thing. I actually made cinnamon rolls for them last night too. Wow, wow, well, <laughs> that's fabulous. And obviously, ladies and gentlemen, these are the perks which uh, the in-laws get to enjoy because <laughs> we have been working for the last three years together, but I've never got a chance to get my hands onto the cinnamon <laughs> roll, which is great. But now, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's about time that we introduce our lovely guests who've been involved, uh, you know, in, in different activities from whichever walk of life they come. They've made sure that they are going to be a handful of help for all of those people yes. who were going through these testing times as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're very lucky that we have been joined by this master. He's a pioneer, uh, and uh, I'm definitely going to give away the details as well. But uh, let's let's do it this way. One of the pioneer in neurosurgery in Pakistan, former head of different units in hospitals, PAMS, and etc. as well. He, he's worked more than my age as well, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> he's got an experience of four decades roughly Mashallah, as well. Mashallah. He's one of those people who have helped a lot of people. But we have certainly some questions which I think will be disturbing for him <laughs> on this particular occasion. Ladies and gentlemen, he's a All consultant like neurosurgeon. He's none other than Professor Dr. Khaliku Zaman Sahib. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Eid Mubarak. Eid Mubarak, sir. Eid Mubarak. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us. Day. And, uh, okay. you know, there's this different way of saying it in Pashto. I think it's Akhtar de Mubarak, Shah. Oh, so the line I knew, I, I think it comes towards the end as well. But sir, thank you very much for gracing our show. Thank you very much for taking our time. Thank you. It's well, wonderful thank to you have you. Thank you for having me. And alongside uh, Professor Zab, ladies and gentlemen, we've actually been joined by somebody who, uh, over the time of period, you know, for whatever uh, months we have actually passed by in these testing times, she's made sure that she's not going to leave the side of the of her patients as well. She made sure that she's going to give them consultancy, may it be over the internet or may it be in person too as well, ladies and gentlemen. She happens to be a psychologist and she's none other than Ms. Sana Khan. Hello, Assalamu Alaikum, Eid Mubarak. Assalamu Alaikum, Eid Mubarak to both of you as well. Thank you so much and welcome back. We love having you on the yeah, show. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for uh, joining us as well and alongside her, ladies and gentlemen, we've actually been joined by somebody who started her career as an event manager. Uh, okay. She happens to be one of the best event managers over here in Islamabad as well. And she's got quite a lot of good events under her hat too as well. But recently, uh, she's been actually appointed as the Deputy General Secretary in South Sports and Cultural Wing, oh, wow. PTI. She is none other than Ms. Jamila Siddiqui. Hello, Assalamu Alaikum, Eid Mubarak. Wa Alaikum Assalam, Eid Mubarak to you. And this is my, I guess, fourth Eid with you guys. Yes, exactly. I guess so. But this thank is you my so second much. family <laughs> on Eid. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you so much for taking the time thank out. Thank you so much. You, you are looking gorgeous. Oh, well, so same okay. to you, actually. That's I great. want to hear this. Yeah, that's great. Thank brilliant. you very much for saying that to my co-host only. <laughs> only. But yes, it's perfectly <laughs> all right. It's Eid for me too. But yes, thank you very much. And alongside her, ladies and gentlemen, we have actually been joined by somebody who happens to be an artist, but he's made sure that within these uh, days, you know, these testing times and, uh, you know, when everybody was actually stressed, uh, he was the one who actually came up with a newer song, which was about uh, spreading awareness about coronavirus as well. Ladies and gentlemen, very quickly, he's a singer himself. He's none other than Mr. Umar Nazir. Hello, Assalamu alaikum, Eid Mubarak. Eid Mubarak to you. And thank you so much, uh, Shadabai, for a wonderful introduction. Thank Aww. you very much for joining us. It's wonderful to have you. But thank everybody you. wears a shalwar kameez on Eid exactly, Day. What happened man. to you? You are wearing a pant and a shirt. No, are you I still in usually, that age category? I don't usually wear shalwar kameez on Eid. And I so remember, Umar, last time you came, you were also in your casuals yeah, as well. Yes. <laughs> this is my second Eid with you guys. Yes. yes thank I you remember. very much. You know, because uh, we, alhamdulillah, happen to have so many people on the show, ladies and gentlemen, we actually forget. But everybody is our family, whoever absolutely. has taken out time and whoever been on the show too as well. So for all great. the, yeah, absolutely. For all the people who are right now in front of their screen, uh, screens, first of all, I want to say, I hope you have a brilliant, a very fun plate of well, food and savanya and everything right in front of you <coughs> while you watch our show as well. Uh, we have a lot of games planned. We have yeah. a lot of songs for you guys, you yeah. know, as well. But to begin with, I want to ask my brilliant guest over here, Shazad, how different your Eid was in terms of, you know, COVID-19, because this is a unique experience, first time ever, I'm sure, in all of your lives ever, right? Yep. And did you guys put a break on your work for Eid? To begin with you, sir, because sure. your work is actually like very crucial, I want to say. Yes, uh, well, I think we have two types of works, as far as I'm concerned as a surgeon. Okay. Uh, for example, there are emergencies and mm. there are elective. So there are cold cases, for right. example. So obviously, uh, even uh, people wouldn't like to come to me during Eid or Ramadan even when they have specially lockdown and all the other exactly. uh, things that are happening. So um, emergency is gone. Okay. So you cannot say no and you cannot really have your phone off. 
you have to work mm -hmm. uh, for any emergency that comes in. Not only for, uh, for example, corona patients, but also uh, there are other people who also can fall sick, and therefore you have to look after them. Absolutely. So that, uh, that is from the work point of view. Mm -hmm. uh, so yes and no. <laughs> okay, it but it was different generally speaking, uh, like in terms of festivities. Festivities is a lot different. Yeah. A lot different. And did you I miss mean, your grandson? Uh, for example, we would go to our village, mm -hmm. and in village it is completely different. Yeah. Uh, when you stay in Islamabad, uh, even if you, s uh, for example, when you're on call, you have to stay in Islamabad. In the past, for example, we have stayed in Islamabad. Right. So you go to different people, for example, who you can visit, and they uh, occasionally they visit, but uh -huh. normally because we used to go around Islamabad, who we knew when I used to be on call and when we used to get time. But um, this time, I think both are restricted. For example, we yeah. can't go home, we can't go to the village, and also we have to restrict ourselves in uh, uh, during Eid time, this time as well. Right, that's true. Because obviously we have to really s uh, make sure hmm. that we do not visit those people who we really used to or wish to. Yeah. Yeah. Because usually you go to your elders hmm. in order to pay respects and salams. Exactly. And exactly. the youngers come to you in order to pay respect and salams. But I think this time it's different. Uh, I mean, uh, different. most of the time, perhaps two third of them uh, who uh, Eid Mubarak on the phone. Exactly. Oh. Yeah. And, and that's how it is this time around, ladies and gentlemen. We have to accept it and we have to move forward with it. And in no time, inshallah, things will be fine. But let me ask you, sir, do you like this part of being on call every time and that patients reaching out to you too as well, especially on these days? And what does our uh, auntie have has to say about uh, all of this as well, that well, you're always on the phone. And does she ever ask you that it might be somebody else, some special patient yes. wishing you Eid Mubarak? <laughs> I don't know what you meant by that. I think uh, I was in uh, practice when you were even not <laughs> born yet. And it's to some extent, it's true. Uh, but they are used to it. And they expect that any time if there was a uh, party going on or celebrations or get togethers going on at home, he might just get up and say, all right, I have to go. Okay. Because we have a kind, time is limited for us, yes. especially mm. for a neurosurgeon. You cannot actually f uh, completely finish your cup of tea right. before you attend to a patient. Exactly. Because uh, there might be a matter of life and death. Exactly. So therefore you have mm. to actually uh, act. And sir, we want to thank you for your yeah. services as well. Thank you very much for giving yeah. us, uh, I think that you know you have actually given us more neurosurgeons than uh, you know anybody else over here in Pakistan yeah. as well. And that too, with so much skill at their hands, so I think that we're really glad that you have actually taken our time to be on our show. Too. Absolutely. Well, I'd like to make a sure. little point here. Uh, sorry if no I problem. have interrupted. But I think what Pakistan has given me, I don't think I have returned even a fraction of that. Wow. <laughs> so and that was my duty. And uh, about, uh, about that, I think uh, uh, if I wouldn't have done it, I would have felt guilty. And that's that's you so sweet, modest. actually, and that's so nice of you, too. And ladies and gentlemen, for all of those who don't know Dr. Sab, I want to say that this is legit whatever he said, because I know his family, mashallah, his grandchildren that's even true. live abroad. And, uh, well, he decided to stay in Pakistan and serve the nation, and that is why we're here celebrating the frontline warriors as well. But now moving on to a psychologist who, let's say, of course, cannot, even if you want to, cannot put a hold on your work, mm -hmm. especially in mm -hmm. COVID-19 times. Because even if you didn't have a patient of COVID-19, yeah. still the clients that were seeing you were definitely stressed yeah. because of the situation. Exactly. How different was it to deal with all of this? And I want to say, did it bother you at some point that, you know, maybe it's getting out of control? Uh, yeah, so um, the profession I'm in also, uh, you know, of course, it is very relevant and um, it does have a lot of uh, responsibility hmm. uh, because, you know, the whatever the situation is people with uh, like my previous clients who were already coming to me with depression or with um, anxiety issues or with you know um, other domestic issues um, these have increased because of the of course quarantine and that right. everybody is together and then um, there is no way to be distracted mm -hmm. you know so uh, that has become difficult and uh, I have seen um, patients or clients we call yeah. them clients, um, getting a little um, irritated and mm. you know agitated with this situation. Because and impatient basically, right? Exactly, it's because natural. now there is no way out for them. Exactly. Uh, so, so mostly we tell them, you know, of course we 
teach them distraction techniques and we teach them you know do this do that. Uh, so, it has become very difficult and limited for them. So, it is a difficult time. Of course. Uh, yeah, but there are alternate ways. It is not that of course, and I am working on that and you know we are giving alternates to do that, but it is difficult. But I get it. Of course, it is difficult Sana and I want to sort of you know pay tribute from all of us on the behalf of you know everyone watching right now to the kind of patients that you have to adopt in order to you know deal with the clients as well. But now Sana, you have mashallah mashallah a family, you have beautiful mm -hmm. daughters as well mm -hmm. and then also clients that you cannot say that you know what, I am not going to deal with your depression on each day because I want to be happy. It does not yeah. work that way. Yeah. Yes. It does. So, what about like your mental state? How does that you know stay balanced? Yeah. So wanted to ask the same question, but chalo, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. So um, you know what? I am all as a human being also very empathetic. Yeah. Uh, when I wasn't in this profession, even then, you know, I am sensitive to people's emotions and you know what they're going through. That's nice. So for me, it is not. It's very natural um, to help somebody, even if you know uh, I'm not in this profession. I would like to go and uh, help people. Mm -hmm. And for my kids, I think they understand and uh, the good thing about my profession is that therapy can be done through online sessions. Yeah. Right. So, mostly I am taking online sessions and I have a private practice. Uh, so, my uh, children are also very empathetic because Aww. they have been brought up in a in, in an such environment. An environment exactly. Yeah. So, so they do understand that it is very important That's and, nice. and the good thing is that my younger daughter, uh, she would also you know really counsel me and if I am uh, a little agitated or you know tense. What so does she say though? Yeah, so she says she says really nice things. She says, Mama, I think you need a hug. Aww. So <laughs> she'll come, she'll hug me. Mashallah. And then she'll say, sometimes she'll say, Okay, Mama, I think you need alone time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'll let you be. Imagine toddlers yeah. realizing that yeah. that's and a she's blessing. <laughs> she's yeah. tense. So oh, mashallah. Yeah, she's very so my kids are also emotionally a bit more um, I don't know. Yeah. Um, and empathetic also, you know, they That's understand right. uh, that yeah. it is a very important. Uh, yeah, a little psychologist. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it naturally comes That's from sweet. the mothers too, as well, ladies and gentlemen, because you know when kids see their parents doing something, I think that they're very empathetic about it, and they want them to be, you know, enjoying that comfort which the kids are enjoying by themselves too, as well. So Beautiful. yeah, prayers to all of those kids who are out there and who are actually uh, this empathetic towards their parents too, as well. And for all of those kids who do not listen to their parents. I don't think this show is for you, okay? <laughs> you need to listen to your parents too as well. But very quickly now moving on to Ms. Shumaila over here. So Ms. Shumaila, over the period of uh, the entire th 30 days of Ramadan, hmm. we have seen, we have witnessed that you know you were distributing ration bags and you were out there and you were helping people on the streets and you made sure that nobody within your own vicinity is actually going to sleep hungry too as well. How was that entire thing and wh what do you feel after doing so much for so many people out there? It's our duty to uh, pay to this country because uh, it's our identity and uh, during this period we cannot do much about uh, culture and sports because it's uh, social distancing right. and so many things are closed and we cannot do events and nothing uh, can be happen. Exactly. So it is the only time to, uh, uh, res to feel the responsibility towards the country and uh, we try to maintain the social distancing and all safety measures, we try to distribute the ration and the groceries uh, yeah. and the bags of wow. uh, uh, medicines and even during the whole Ramzan we started all the uh, with all the collaboration of all our PTI uh, uh, friends and colleagues wow. we started distributing the cooked food to the uh, areas where less privileged people are there That's and nice. we tried to maintain this uh, that people should not come to take the food and we should go to them and uh, our workers go to them uh, to the doors to doors uh, to oh, distribute brilliant. the food. Wow. That's brilliant. And yeah. you know what, Shamala, I really have to mention over here. Um, you know, all the people I've met from the incumbent government, of course, one thing common about them is they have this passion of doing work. Like you mentioned, because of the COVID-19 thing, you couldn't arrange events or sports or anything. Right. Yeah. But that didn't stop you from doing anything, right? You still had that passion of serving the people. And yes. that's what you did, you know. We with can the divert the attention towards uh, the responsibility. That's actually brilliant. And I really want to commend right. that to the effort as well. Exactly. But now talking about Eid Day itself, uh, you know, there are certain traditions, wake up early in the morning, maybe make a sweet dish, do mm. something fun. Were the traditions different this year and how has the morning been so far for you? First of all, it's very pleasure to be here because uh, this is the only happening in my life Aww. today. <laughs> Ours <laughs> as well. I'm not going anywhere <laughs> today and I just uh, uh, cooked a very small ball of uh, sheer kurma because I'm the only one who will go to eat this. Okay. this time. <laughs> my daughter is not with me, she's uh, studying in US and she's also locked down with the family. My all uh, um, family is not around because but we are your family. 
Just of so course, you, know. <laughs> you are. <laughs> you are. So uh, this time, I'm missing my family as well, uh, the friends and the family friends. I cannot visit them, hmm. and I will try to maintain this. <laughs> exactly, That's and nice. I think everybody needs to maintain this as well. And very quickly, adding on to what Shiza and Shamila were actually speaking about, ladies and gentlemen, I think I will take a minute over here to appreciate whatever measures were taken by the <laughs> government as well, because you know, not just us. I think the uh, all over the world, people are saying that Pakistan actually took some amazing measures oh, to yeah. actually avoid the disease to, uh, to be spread all over the country too as well. And not just that, I think that everybody, each and every member of PTI as well as a, as a party member have contributed towards that. And uh, I think that this is, this is why we've actually managed to come out of it. We're not out of it completely, but we will be. And it is all because of the fact that our premier, ladies and gentlemen, happens to be a visionary and an Absolutely. educated one. I think that that's fabulous. But very quickly, I think because, you know, we happen to call ourselves artists. And alongside you, we have another artist as well. So, Umar, <laughs> how's your Eid as an artist? You do not wear shalwar kameez. How do you feel the essence of Eid itself? Doesn't your mama say you or, or tell you that, you know, putar ek din to yaar paale agar shalwar kameez? No, it's not something like that. But I must say that I miss my jams days. Okay. Uh, we cannot jam, we cannot do music properly yep. in a proper manner. Because, okay. uh, you know, um, the, it's a very difficult time. And uh, uh, I have only one message. Uh, to all the nation that we should, uh, you know, understand the uh, conditions uh, that uh, government are trying to, you know, uh, say us to uh, exactly. in order to, you know, uh, save us from this coronavirus. Yes, absolutely. So this is all I want to say. Exactly. And over one thing, so sorry, Shazad, no I'm problem. cutting you off over here. But Umar, remem I remember last time when you came, you mentioned that you are absolutely annoyed by the fact when people get together and they're like, "Koi gana to sunao yaar, ya yeah, get your guitar, you know, play something for us." No, it's no. not going to happen this time because you know, no social gatherings. Uh, whenever, um, uh, like, uh, um, Henry, yeah. I always say to you that we. <laughs> Uh, cannot jam. Mm. We, uh, we cannot go outside for a jam. We cannot do music. Yeah. So uh, we all we do all our music in our calls. Oh, yeah. like <laughs> Zoom, like or, or Instagram Conference Live. Calls yeah. like we do music. Uh, we got the co comments and then we you know uh, reply them. Exactly. But the wonderful part over here, ladies and gentlemen, is that Umar has actually uh, made a song about coronavirus. It's a few lines. So we would actually we are going to request him to sing us a few lines and then we'll move on towards. Uh, one of the most interesting question about Eid and <laughs> that too after your song. So go ahead. What have you written about coronavirus? Tell us, a f you know, a brief background of <laughs> what it is all about. से मिलकर लड़े जरा हमने डरना नहीं लड़ना है क्या हो जाएगा कुछ दिन जो घर पर रह लेंगे बाहर नहीं जाए आप बचा लेंगे मुल्कों को मुका सोचेंगे कुछ परेशानी सह लेंगे हमने डरना नहीं लड़ना है हमने डर Brilliant. That's beautiful and the best part over here, ladies and gentlemen, is that he actually prepared this entire song for the show itself. Thank you very much, Umar, for putting so in so much effort. You know, because I myself, I write lyrics, so I know how much intellectual effort it takes to <laughs> actually write something down and then strum it too as well. So wonderful job. Thank you so much. And I think that this should actually be a public service message as well for everybody out there. Please make sure that you look after yourselves because I've seen a lot of aunties going out for shopping too. I'm sorry, I'm not targeting any <laughs> anybody over here. But you know, uh, unfortunately, yeah. that's what I was thinking, sir, that God forbid if, you know, they're going to get a new dress, but what if they contract the yeah. virus and they're no more till the Eid day? 
So you know, so they won't be wearing those dresses too as well. So somebody, uh, a lot of people have made these mistakes. But let's, you know, I think that it's about time that we do not discuss about right. that. Right. No, but absolutely, of course. And one more thing, Shazad, I want to do <laughs> mention over here. Don't take take this towards I want to say a gender based a sort of a debate or something because yep. it's not. While you know, um, there are a lot of people going to the markets as well. Yes. And just last night, Shazad and Chandrat, yep. I actually witnessed two cities because, of course, I was sort of traveling all the time between Kari and Islamabad and everything. People have no control. A lot of people were out in the streets. Of course, I do realize it's a moment of festivities. We all absolutely love this reward by Allah Ta'ala after 30 days of fasting as well. But here's the thing, this is a different situation. And even your God, even your religion tells you to be careful for yourself and for the people yeah. around you exactly. when there's such a thing as this pandemic as well. So be careful well towards the next two days as yeah. well if it was not Chandra. Or to have a better understanding of it, you know, we as Muslims, we definitely have faith in Allah Almighty and we pray that, you know, nothing happens to us. But for that, Allah actually tells you that you know if you're going to pray that your camel does not get stolen you, all you have to do is that you have to tie your camel first over here people in pakistan do not have a camel but they're praying that you know their camel's not being stolen too as well so i think <laughs> right. that's the problem but very quickly uh so now what i want to know is that you know whenever we talk about eid whenever it's eid you know there are a lot of memories and flashbacks and nostalgia which takes place mm -hmm. so i want to ask about one of your favorite childhood memories about eid may it be anything go ahead Ask me a question this, this time, but I'm surprised. I even thought over it last night. Wow! I was watching the series Thoral. Yes. Oh. And uh, I have a maternal uncle, uh, Mamu, who is in Karachi now, and mm -hmm. he is still the same, although he is almost 90 years old. Mashallah. He was a great horse rider. Wow. And uh, you know the place that I come from is Bafa. And near Bafa, there was a capital of Turkish Empire. You know, the Turkish Empire yes. came right up to Mansera. Wow. And uh, there is still a place called Guliba, which is about two or three miles from my own home village. Okay. Bafa. And um, every Eid, he used to take me on the horse, uh, along with the other kids as well, uh, to the uh, little um, celebrations the children used to have. For yes. example, there used to be games. There, could, there used to be horse rides. race, horse race uh, races and rides, etc. So one day, uh, the, one of the Eids, uh, I can't remember exactly which Eid was it, but I was around about seven or six years old. Right. And uh, he didn't take me. Oh. So I was very upset. Uh, why didn't he <laughs> take me? Yeah. And um, somehow one of my cousins was going there again, and I told him that, look, tell my uh, mamu uh, that I'm very upset, and mm -hmm. I'm coming on my foot. <laughs> uh, and, <for laughs> and six, seven years old for about three, four miles. Yes. So he had to come. And uh, well, he didn't have to come, but he came for me. Yeah. And uh, I was his uh, sister's yes, son, son. You know, the only son. And in fact, actually, my mother died um, uh, when I was too young, oh two and a half so years sorry. old. So therefore, he used to uh, think specially uh, wow. as compared to his other nephews. So therefore, he came all the way. And I was the only one on the horse. Aww. And he uh, ran along with me. Wow. He was like the horal. Oh and nice. I still salute him. He's in Karachi. He doesn't understand English, but um, I will actually uh, send him a message. Oh. So, so let's do and this. Thank and you I think for reminding me that. Sir, that I'm going to seize this moment for you. Yeah. And I actually want you to wish him in whichever language you want to. Yeah. Please go ahead, look into the camera and talk to you, Mamu. Yeah, because yeah. it's so beautiful. I love how Say sparkling you your eyes to. are getting about yeah. it as well. Achhi, baba. Achhi, baba. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> 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 और खुशहाल हो से हमेशा जमुन पर सर्वनिष्ठा साया मौजूद है देरा मनना ताकि जमा मशूम वाले दम रख को लेकर दे खुदाई देस्ता पर उनके जन देर उगत हो कि देर उगत हो साथी और खुदाई देम तक कैसे खुशहाल खेरा दे साथ वाह वंडरफुल सो लेडीज़ एंड जेल्मन आई एक्चुअली अंडरस्टूड अ फ्यू लाइंस दैट सर वी � and that it's Eid Mubarak, so Eid Mubarak, but the later lines I cannot understand. So if you <laughs> are willing to let us know, please let us know. Well, uh, I just thanked him for the wonderful uh, childhood that he yeah. gave me in Masha. spite of my problems when Masha. I was uh, too young That's to understand. And I actually, only yesterday when I was watching that series, it's just because he was a great horse rider, yes. he was a great sportsman, he used to swim a l like 
he was just a, uh, a total figure for me. Wow. And uh, that series actually really reminded me of my Mamu. Mamu Zindabad. Mamu oh. Zindabad. <laughs> 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 to all the Mamus That's out so there. Sweet. And That's this sweet. is the true essence of Eid, ladies and gentlemen, that we get to wish everybody who's out there who's on your mind too as well. But very quickly, Sarah, what about you? What about your fondest childhood memory? I want to add something to that as well. This is mm -hmm. actually a question for Sana and Shazad and everyone with kids over here in the studio. <laughs> Does it ever happen that, you know, um, on festivities like Eid, w one of your daughters will do something that is so nostalgic of your personality when you were that age, you used to do those things on Eid or something that you're like, oh, this is little me. Does that happen? She already uh, knows. Yeah. No, no, it doesn't happen at oh. all. So my daughters, they uh, look also different. Uh, they don't look like me, they look like their father. Okay. And I think they act also. <laughs> and this is uh, what yes. I want to ask, how disturbing <laughs> it is, you know, when you know that your kids do not look like you. Yeah, it's like... It is very disturbing, no? It, I think now I'm like kind of uh, used to it, but yeah, it happened with me so many times, like, you know, I would take my kids anywhere and people would ask, who are they? Like, they're my daughters, like, oh, oh no, they don't <laughs> look like you. <laughs> like, yeah, but they're my daughters, so... Um, it's because probably you don't look like a mother at all. It's a compliment. Looks <laughs> 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 wise. No, but I the best part is whenever I, where, whenever I'm looking at my daughters, hmm. the only person I can think of is my father-in-law. You know, really? <laughs> and really? this is very disturbing. Yeah. <laughs> it hurts me at times that you know, why are my daughters not like me? Why are they like their nana? You know, it's really disturbing. I get it. So my daughters are exact. They are exactly like their father. Yeah. So yeah. So. Th you know, I was re really fond of uh, making dresses and buying churiya and all. All girly that, stuff. Yeah, all girly stuff. And my daughters are really not bothered about Aww. that. Right. So, yeah, I can't really think of anything that uh, reminds me of myself. Mm -hmm. Other than that, that yes, my younger one is very picky with food. Mm -hmm. So it's a, uh, it's a very difficult thing for me to uh, make her eat. Uh, anything and she's not fond of desi food so whenever oh. you know the festivities and all so we mostly make this desi kind of uh, you know everything sweet dish and right. she'll sit on the table like mama what is this I'm like oh. <laughs> so I'm like yaar tum kaun sa angrez ho tum kaa se hai that's yeah. cute uh, and and I think that it is uh, very relieving for you, know, that you really do not have to put in so much effort. Otherwise, when you have girls, you have to really, you know, look out for the dresses and no. churia and whatnot, which is... I, I do it all myself and they're like, they trust me. Uh -huh. uh, but yeah, they're not into it at all. So all they, right. if given a choice, they would want to wear their casual oh. clothes. Very Lucky nice. you. <laughs> Smileji, what about you? Since you miss your family too as well, so yeah. your fondest, your best childhood memory about Eid. I was the very innocent, decent bacha. Hopefully my old, old uh, ex-neighborhood is not watching the TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Who would I disagree? <laughs> <laughs> they will disagree and they will say he, she is lying. <laughs> oh. <laughs> because I was the most annoying person uh, all, all over the street and I was just disturbing everyone and oh. I was, uh, we, we were uh, having a gang in the street. Okay. And I was leading the gang and I was always... Uh, um, Sporty sporty and boyish kind of a girl. I can't girl. imagine you like that. I was, I was uh, since metric, I was like very, I had a short haircut and then. Tomboy. Tomboy. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then suddenly I camouflaged and changed my uh, whole attire. I became a very nice, decent, uh, girly, <laughs> girly stuff and started Sweet. mehndi and churiya and all that. My, but my daughter is totally opposite. Uh -huh. uh, the kids are like this nowadays. They don't Indians. like churiya and mehndi. This time, this is the first year I'm not having uh, mehindi because of the this uh, social distancing, and no. I uh, haven't you like went it? to. Uh, I like to have mehindi now. Yeah? Yes, I love it. I actually uh -huh. really don't like. Even on my wedding, I didn't wear a mehindi, right? And my mom really? was like, "You really have to. It's a tradition." So I got a mehindi sticker instead. <laughs> <laughs> and as soon as the rukshti was over, I was like, "Here you go. I'm done with my mehindi." Smart solution. <laughs> Nowadays, mehindi is like a. Is yeah, like we'll come back to mehindi. We'll come back to mehindi. <laughs> yeah, we've a lot of other things to discuss too as well. But Uber, what about you? Yeah. You, since you're a kid yourself, as of now, so you know any of the recent memories you want to share? Please go ahead. Did did you ever got beaten on Eid Day? No. I did. No. <laughs> uh, I, I have one memory to share. When I Go was ahead. a kid, uh, my relatives, you know, used to give us Eid. So um, I planned to, you know, buy a guitar uh, okay. for myself. Uh, so um, when I uh, bought it, uh, bought the guitar. So that guitar was a beginner guitar. I couldn't play that okay. guitar. You know. That was not a uh, like a guitar that you can play, yeah. that you can make a sound. So so many so, spaces between yeah, the frets. Because I I, I, I don't got I didn't get that uh, much money okay. to buy. A uh, good how guitar. much money was it exactly? 
to be honest. Like 800 to 900, it was just a show. And that was your ED? Yes. You're way more luckier than us, man. We used to get 50 rupees or 100 rupees in ED. I think Hardly that. that. Now the time has changed. Now we have to give ED to our <laughs> young, younger ones. All right. So oh, that okay. means that I shouldn't actually be calling you beta anyway. You're giving ED in the same category. Now. Yes, the fun part begins. Here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. So actually, Shazad and I got like so excited about the age shows as well yeah. that we went overboard with planning a lot of games. Uh, first of all, I do want to say thanks to our producers and our researcher for all the effort here. So here's the thing. Are we doing allegations? Yes, we are doing allegations. So Shazad is going to explain the rules. So what we have done is that we've actually written a few uh, allegations which have actually been given to us by your friends and family members as well. Yeah. What you can do is that you can agree or disagree and you can let us know whether it's correct or not. You know, but it is an allegation, <coughs> it's not an accusation. So whatever you have to say in your defense, you'll have to say it today. So the first one I think is going to be for Professor Sir, would you mind? You do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So sir, your wife happens to tell us, uh, mm. or to, to, you know, this it's is an what, allegation. This is what she shared with us. I'm very <laughs> sorry that you never knew this. But she said that there was a time in your life and you got so busy with your work that you actually used to come very late back home. Is like, that correct? Is it? It's almost like you forgot you had a home. No, that's correct. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's correct. That's still All right, correct. ladies and gentlemen, that allegation is correct. But why? Why was that happening? You know, why couldn't you manage manage your time so wonderfully that your wife was happy and you were happy at the same time? No, it's not that they uh, they were not happy. They would have the weekends, and whenever I used to be off, I always used to take them out. I right. think uh, partially. If you explain it further, then I can explain <laughs> it further too. But, <laughs> but one thing for sure, uh, that if uh, I wouldn't have, at that time, I had, a, uh, I had to fight on all fronts. Yeah. Okay. You see, it's not easy to establish yourself. It's not easy for the beginners. When I came uh, from uh, abroad, yeah. uh, I was trained in Cambridge, and I had a wonderful time there while being trained. But when I came here, I, I had to start from zero. Oh, and course. therefore, I had to develop professionally, yeah. socially, yeah. as well as financially. Hmm. You see, in order, and uh, I, have, I had one kid, and the other kid was born in Islamabad. But uh, when I came, I started thinking about their, because I was living in a flat yeah. uh, in the premises of PIMS, and it was just a two bedroom flat. And yeah. I was thinking that, look, I wouldn't ha like to have my children, when I die, to live in a flat like this. Wow. So, therefore, at the same time, I, uh, you couldn't do it unless you treat your patients properly exactly. and you do your duties properly. You have to be before time and you know you might spend most of the time while you're working. So you have to do uh, extra. Wow. You have to do more than duty. There is a reason for it and that's my motto as well. Service is more than duty. Yeah. Hmm. Duty finishes said too. Service never. Finishes. Service is a continuous process. Yeah, exactly. Similarly, beautiful. you say when there are patients, uh, I. I get very upset when, I'm sorry with uh, your patients, uh, you said clients, but it is uh, uh, an American terminology. Yeah. Yeah. They have made, for example, health services is a business. No. Mm. True, it's a business. And in business, they say uh, no lunch is free. Yeah. Oh. But here, Never. Uh, I was British trained. So it's completely different. different yeah. I think you have to provide service if you get nothing out of it, except this, that you're satisfied and you go to bed very nicely and have a nice sleep. And although at the cost of some of the social and domestic and also family uh, happinesses, exactly. you have to actually, sometimes you can't attend a wedding, you cannot uh, go out uh, or whatever, but you know, that's the choice. All right. You know, when you become a doctor, <laughs> then, you know, your life is not yours anymore. So, you know, listening to all of this, you know, it is so understandable and it is so relevant that I can understand this. But why do you think your wife never understood this? <laughs> well, wives, <laughs> wives never understand. That's oh. true. You know what happens? I had uh, a little. There was a there was a peer. You know what peer is? Yeah. You know those uh, right. very uh, poised people who really do wonders. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, there was this uh, lady, uh, his wife, obviously, yes. and uh, his wife was never never happy. But one day, uh, you know, he, uh, what happened, what she saw, uh, so one of the group of such boys, people, flying on the carpet and going around and making tricks on th at the top of their, uh, uh, magic uh, on, the, uh, on the magic carpet, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, over, the, over his own house. When he came back in the evening, uh, the wife said, look, you are also a, a, a magic person or, or uh, a poised <laughs> person. He was the real peer. <laughs> he was doing, 
I said, really, it was good? Yeah. I said, yes. Yes, he <laughs> was very good. Uh -huh. uh, and he was excellent. So he said, well, that was me. I said, oh, that's why you were going. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, this is, this is a universal <laughs> so problem. It's a universal <laughs> problem. Uh, but the little thing Seven that I would like to share, uh -huh. we are all perhaps now parents. Um, yeah. So yeah. let me tell you this. After a certain age, 40 years or 50 years, they realize. Now I am like a king of the family. Alhamdulillah. You know, I'm looked after. <laughs> I even <laughs> don't choose my clothes. They have to choose. Uh, you know, uh, or they have to arrange. I don't like, for example, wearing you know, fashionable dresses or whatever. For the first time, I came to know about various brands through my children. <laughs> so uh, I thank you. Uh, I thank mm -hmm. them and thank my wife. Obviously, she Master. trained them. So Master. I think that this All is, right. you know, towards the end of every speech, you actually have to say <laughs> something. <laughs> yes. about you have to save your face as well because you have to go back home and yeah. then you know yeah, show yeah. up the same face. Exactly. <laughs> but, but that's smart of you. The next start. delegation now, which is uh, for Miss Sana Khan over here. So please go ahead. All right. So Sana, you were accused of going into the makeup shops and using testers to get ready for a function. <laughs> <laughs> Did you do that ever? Never. <laughs> I have done that, by the way. For real? I never a that. perfume? Um, <laughs> so many times. I have, you know, when I go to a makeup shop, mostly Sephora and all. I spend a lot of time there testing and all. But I don't know, it never happened that I got a chance <laughs> to get ready from there and go. Okay. Yeah, but well, I do try a lot of testers. I'm going to say I'm guilty of uh, you know using or wearing a perfume or a body spray out of a shop. So yeah. yes, I did do that. Did you ever? Yeah, oh. obviously <laughs> yes. <All right>. Whenever <laughs> I'm traveling, I don't use my perfume. Yeah, yeah. Uh, whenever <laughs> I, I have the stopovers and transit flights, yeah. I go to the duty-free shops and I can try the testers and uh, lipsticks. It's so much fun, actually. Yeah, <laughs> it's fun. Uh, we have to pass the time. Yeah. So, so I'm very sorry, but this is an allegation which is by from your, uh, which is from your son Rahim, uh -huh. and he says that Mama takes away all the idi I get. Like she so borrows and never returns. Are you, are you going to I'm agree sure to he's this? very smart. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you do this or not? Yeah, this, is, this is an allegation. Mm, not and if now, you do this, why do you do eight. this? He is eight now because yeah. uh, before, but uh, he's like uh, the uh, typical uh, kids and he always say, you still have my EB. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I returned him, it still he said, you still have you my still, yeah, You still have. Happens we are me. like this in our childhood. We always like uh, the same with the parents. Exactly. You still have my money. <laughs> exactly. And you know what? I'm going to add on to this as well. I still remember, ladies and gentlemen, that when we were kids and we used to go to our Popo's house. So our Popo's used to, I, I mean, I love my Popo's and a lot of respect to them, but I'm just sharing it. That, uh, for example, if somebody is given 500 rupees, so you know, the Popo will actually ask for that 500 rupees from uh, her daughters or sons <laughs> and then give it back to us. You know? So this, is, this was an exchange as well. It, it looked like it, as if it's barter trade of yeah. money. But yeah, that's how it was. That's how it was. But for you, my friend, it's a very different one. Your friends have actually uh, gotten in touch with us and they, they've told Accused. us that mm -hmm. when you Whenever you've been in need of money and you've taken money from them, you've never returned <laughs> it on time. No. Oh, no. <laughs> now you have to think no, which friend of yours. Every time I return money, uh, whenever I, you know, want them to give me money, I, uh, for the sake of time, I'll return yeah. to them. But there's one friend you haven't returned it back to him. <laughs> no, as of yet. You, you have to go call him back. Do you, do you want <laughs> me to call him right now? Or, or uh, actually give give a little bit of proof? Do you want no, us I to don't, do I don't remember okay, that. Okay, you know, there can be multiple, there can be multiple reasons, okay? Yes. so. What, what do you think was the problem that you actually got late or it was delayed? Because, uh, uh, or, you know, yeah. uh, it's a lockdown, we, can, we don't uh, <laughs> have any events, <laughs> coming there, so <laughs> we don't have any work to do, yes. so we don't have any money. Exactly. But can you so guess which friend which might friend? have told us? Can you us? guess which friend? Mm, no. You can't? Who is coming to me? No. So much, yaar. Imagine. <laughs> 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 uh -huh. <laughs> 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 Oh. It's all right, all right. So, so ladies and gentlemen, hence Accepted. I think uh, all our allegations did very well as well. Yeah. But we definitely want to thank you for being a part of our show. You guys took out time. We are very sorry that if we have said anything or we have, you know, uh, 
kind of accused you of something wrong as well, but was just for the fun. And there was nobody we were talking to. It wasn't even Valid. It wasn't Bhabi, <laughs> or it wasn't anybody. You know, we just kind of tricked you guys Good as well. Day, yeah. But it was just because <laughs> of the fact that we could feel that this is Eid this uh, this time around as well. Because this time around, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be very different for a lot of people as well. So we want to thank you. And towards the end of this segment, we have a lot more people coming in. Oh, we will actually going to request Umar to sing us one more song so that we can head out and end this segment. So you want to say something, please? Yeah, let me compliment. I think you did a wonderful job. By thank extracting something that <laughs> we would have never <laughs> that said. Exactly. <laughs> that was actually the game plan as well. But thank you so much for coming. Thank and you thank you so much for thank actually you. brightening up our morning as well. Eid Mubarak. Eid Mubarak. Eid uh, this song is my favorite. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to sing Ravi by Sajjad Ali. Oh. And this is for Valid out there. So Valid, <laughs> till the time your please money comes in, please make sure that you utilize this song, okay? Valid bhai is also my precautionist. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm a 